happy, happy, happy New Year. Okay, we stepping in in 24 with some new stuff. We stepping in the 24 with some good stuff. We stepping in the 24 with some real stuff. Harriet Tubman, Demon Slayer, number four, The Review, coming at you. This is Be Real with D-Real. Alive and alert on the north side of the dirt. It's your man D Real coming at you with another B Real with D Real, where entertainment explains it. Yeah, Harriet Tubman, Demon Slayer, number four. Um, last time we left you, Harriet Tubman had gotten uh Caesar, Catherine, and Venus Edgefield out of bondage, not to mention out of getting bit by vampires. Uh Harriet Tubman's adopted son, Chip, who also happens to be white, came along for, for the extra save and blew up the whole forest. And a mysterious figure walked out alive. We're going to have to learn more about that mysterious figure. We're going to have to learn more about what's going on with his situation. And I think that's going to happen in this issue. But before we get off into all of that, we need to do what we need to do before we can do what we want to do. Comment like. Subscribe and share the Be Real with D Real page so that when new material comes out, you get it. If you're digging with a brother shoveling, put some dirt in my bucket, comment, like, subscribe, and share because edutainment is what I do. And keep subscribing because I'm about two or three off of 500, 500 subs. Rolling there, rolling, rolling, rolling. Let's do what we do. We're going to take it to another level for 500 in 24. 500 in 24. A lot of numbers. Too many numbers. Uh, enough numbers. Let's get into some figures. Let's get into some stuff happening. There is Harriet Tubman, Demon Slayer, issue number four, David Crownson, Cortland Ellis, Sharonda J. Brown. I love saying those names. I love saying those names. Um, when this story opens up, and I think that's the pastor. I think it was the pastor from issue one that uh, uh, Caesar had been talking to about escaping. But he's, you know, he's singing the swings for four sweet chariot. And boom, he comes across that fire that Chip started last issue. And then what comes out of the forest? Yeah, it is like Thriller. Look at that. Look at that. And he just comes out of nowhere. And my man, you know, being a good fella he is, he helps helps this supernatural being and the supernatural beings talking to him with the little bit of life that he has left. And he's asking him how there's only one way you can help. How can you help? Give me a piece of that neck, <laughs> he says. And he calls out for the name of Lord Jesus to help him. And we know when Lord Jesus name get called on, there's the result. Now, Back in the town where the Edgefields escaped from, they having a town meeting. Everybody's talking crazy. And, and, and what they talking about, some nigga has been stealing niggas. Excuse my language, but I mean, that's the way that's the way Brother Crownson wrote it. Um, and that's the way, you know, David, David wrote it. I, I did I call him Richard? David Crownson is his name. Um that's the way he wrote it. And I like his writing. I dig his writing. His writing, I, I, I love It's a good enough blend of the modern and the old to be believable. You know? And now this next page, pay attention to this chick here. We'll probably see her Edgefield. And, 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 and what does she say? Think about it. He's a big and strong Hercules looking in. I mean, look at what it did to my husband two days ago. But then we looking at that husband. Ain't that the same husband that got Caesar in the barn and kissed him and then tried to? Yeah. And we're going to find out that people in this family do way more than they supposed to be doing and they get their comeuppance. But that's later on in the book. Suddenly, it's our stranger who walked out of the fire. And he's saying, you know, Caesar Edgefield didn't do that. And so who did? 
and he's breaking it down. And he's explaining it to him. You know, that is Harriet Tubman, that she's a little Negro of 411, but she got skills. And what's the result of the ignorant? They laugh and say, get this line, some bitch out of here. And he tells them, y'all don't want to do that. And that's why right there, crack, crook, snap, and out the window. And what did they make Maurice do? Turn into something dark and evil. And he is just doing something terrible to folk that think they want to do something to him. But then he gets control of himself and he say, okay, sometime I get carried away. Now, the fact that there are still people hanging out and hanging around after all of that, I just think is like, wow. And he's referencing Betsy Ross and say he saw Betsy Ross in Philly about a month ago. So Betsy Ross is a vampire too? Hmm. Or some kind of creature. Interesting. Now, he's going to get back to explaining what he wants to explain, but suddenly... In comes this black woman. And he introduces her as his wife. And that same loud mouth helpful. What did she say? Of course, this heathen is a goddamn nigger lover. She said that in church, but he's a heathen. Yeah. And so that's why a witch is able to take control of you and have you banging your head on the pews till you break your nose and pop a couple of teeth out. I particularly enjoyed that part. And he's making a stop. But then we go still, we started to see something here. Uh, Maurice can't just tell uh, Belladonna what to do because she like how much longer. And, you know, he apologized to the white folks. And he his wife is like, hey, I'm talking to you. And they get into a, a, a husband-wife argument. You can tell they married. Oh, oh, it's mosquitoes out there. I want you to use a good anti-mosquito spell. But I ain't got no anti. Honey, please, please, can you just, please, can you just give me 15 minutes? She told him, no, you got five. And after everything is all done and said and resolved, she's sitting there. Oh, it's it's it was more than five minutes. So I guess the people of the town accepted Maurice's offer to get rid of this nigger who's stealing their slaves. How he gonna do that? He said he's putting the call out. What's the call? Something supernatural, judging from the purple glow on the eyes of the creature on his cane. But he needs the assistance of his lovely wife, Belladonna. Look at that there. <laughs> Black girl magic still making it happen way back when. And basically what's going on now is a supernatural APB being put out to every werewolf, witch, and demon in the United States of America. And the APB is this. Harriet Tubman, out to end your way of life. So join the hunt to end her. And he says, for the honor of our kind. And the one that slays her gets $45,000 for their troubles. Okay. All right. And then there's a little more arguing between Maurice and Belladonna, and then they end up taking off. But that essentially is it. APB on Harriet Tubman. All demons, all vampires, all werewolves. When you see Harriet Tubman, it's on, on site. What is Harriet Tubman going to do about that? Well, I guess we are just going to have to find out in the next issue, which is Harriet Tubman, Demon Slayer, number five. Great work so far by David Crownson. Great art by Cortland Ellis. Great editing by Sharonda Brown. I'm digging the whole vibe. Let's get in. Do some more. I'm so, so with it. Look here, y'all. That's it for now. But fret not, I will be coming at you with another issue of Harriet Tubman, Devil Slayer, when I get it in my hands. Until then, Y'all be good. Be good to each other.